the cold weather asks for, no, demands comfort food. And today's steak and mushroom stew and or pie is the answer. And I say stew and or pie to give you an option because if we're nothing here at Sam the Cooking Guy, we're, if we're nothing, it's, because here at Sam the Cooking Guy, we're about options for you. You're gonna be able to make this and you can take it to this point and eat it as a stew on some pasta, on some mashed potatoes, or take it a little bit further and turn it into a pie with a gorgeous puff pastry crust. I'll leave it up to you. I was gonna say something, I forgot. First, we gotta get everything happening because it goes into the uh, oven for a couple hours and then blah, 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 blah. This is about uh, two and a half pounds of uh, chuck. It's perfect for this. We're, we're slow cooking it, so the fibrous muscles in this will uh, become gentle and relaxed by the time we're done. But we're not gonna cook this giant piece. We're gonna cut it up like this. So I think cube pieces that are about a, oh, I don't know, like a, like a, is that an inch? Squarish inch? Yeah. Something like this. Look, it's all gonna be super tender by the time we're done. And by the way, if this extra fat, if you don't, if you don't want that, then just pull that shit off. This is probably fine. And a little bit of fat's okay. So just do this to the whole thing. I'm gonna be really bored. We make you sit through it. So guess what? We won't. Okay, last piece. Now here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put it on here just to get out of the way. Spread it out just a little bit. Give it a little salt and pepper. Kosher salt, ladies and gentlemen. And we've had the conversation before, but that table salt, that iodized salt, that's not what you want. You want kosher salt. There's nothing added to it. Bigger chunky grains, actually less sodium in like a teaspoon of kosher salt than there is in the table salt. It's what you'll find in almost every restaurant kitchen for their regular cooking. Salt. It's less expensive than sea salt. It's what you want. So throw away everything else, right? Now vegetables. Mushrooms, carrots, and onions, but not regular onions. Oh my God, we're using the little baby pearl onions that are fantastic. You buy them in the freezer section, you defrost them, they're life-changing. Max had one last night. Max, how was it? So good. Thank you, but we don't need to do anything, I'm just showing you. The mushrooms though, we're gonna do this. We're gonna keep the stems on, we'll keep them like this. Just trim a little of this, and depending on their size, if they're huge, you might uh, quarter them, but these guys are, are fine, so I think I'm just gonna have all of these. And I'm just taking off a little bit of the end just to clean them up a bit. But these are actually quite nice ones. And while I'm doing this, I'm uh, thinking that I need to remind you, if they're dirty, like this, just knock it off or use a towel or something. You never wash a mushroom. Chance because? Suck up too much water. That's right, they're like sponges and you don't want them wet. You know, when you cook them, they pee out a lot of the water, I'd like to say. You don't want to introduce more water to these you guys. You regrettably like to say? Don't regrettably, it's exactly no, what it is. regrettably for me. Oh, for you, regrettably, yes. Because apparently you can't handle the word pee too strong for you. I guess I just prefer not to think of my mushrooms peeing. Oh, the mushrooms are done. We'll put them back on here. Now the carrots. Carrots I've rinsed, I, I don't feel the need to, what's that called? Peel them, to, to do the, the outside peeling business. So I don't, I like the flavor, I think it's all good. So we're just gonna cut these guys into nice little pieces. So here, watch, cut like this. I can't remember what this is called. This is a technique. You turn it a quarter and then you cut again. Then another quarter and you cut again. There's a, there's a term. I'm so stupid. Why Some didn't I? Are, everybody's yelling at their screen right now. That they would know they it. know this? Why didn't I go to culinary school? Well, I did terrible at regular school. I think it would have been a mistake, actually. So, but see, look what you get. This is interesting. They're all all right around the same size, which is what you want because we know things at the same size cook at the same time. And last one starts with a B. Uh, binational, that's what it is. It's, they're binational carrots, all right. Everything's cut. Our mise en place is ready. That's just all your stuff uh, in its place ready to go. We start with some bacon to flavor the pot before the steak and then the vegetables and then the broth and then the, the Guinness and then the Guinness. Did I say Guinness? Oh, cause there's Guinness. That is a six or seven, I can't remember, slices of bacon cut up. And it goes, we separate and we cook it till it's given off most of its fat. We cook it until it pees off most of its fat. And of course it's going in the pot ultimately with everything else. But right now we just want a little bit of its fatty goodness to help flavor up the beef when that goes in. Okay, I'm ready. Let's just get most of this out. Oh, they make these things called spoons. We should really look into it. 
of it. You missed the lesson on spoons. <laughs> I wasn't there that day. So we give the pot just a little bit of oil, and then we start to throw the beef in. And you know, whenever we sear meat, I tell you don't overcrowd the pot because it'll like steam or boil or something, and that's not what you want. So we'll do this in two batches. And this is gonna give the meat some beautiful color, but more importantly, that color will translate ultimately to flavor. So if we look at one of the pieces now, right there, right? Getting some nice color. Come on, man, come on, man, no? Like this, yeah. It's gonna take you probably five, six minutes for all of this, and then we'll repeat it. So just take your time, let it get some prettiness on it, and you'll be good. Make a conscious effort not to have your back block some of the light. Sure. There. Thank you. you. Make a conscious effort to replace your fucking lights in a spot. Whoopee. Okay, it's vegetable time. We'll start with the hardiest vegetable, and that would be the carrot. So give them a toss in the deliciousness that's in the bottom of this pot. And I don't think I said it, but you want to do this in a pot that has a lid that can go in the oven. So this is just going to get a couple minutes, and then we'll start to add the other things. Our little pearl onions, that, I think that was, oh, not with the water, it's, I think that was a 14 ounce bag. That if you think it's too many onions, once you start eating this, you'll be like, oh no, that is not too many onions. So that gets about a minute. Who's ready for some garlic? Yeah. How about like six big fat cloves of garlic? Spread it out a little bit. Wait till, you know, wait till it starts to get fragrant. Listen to Chance patronizing you. Nice. Spread it out a little. He's a good kid, that Chance. Leave him alone. Now that it smells good, now you mix it in. I'm so happy. How about some tomato paste? How about it? Thank you. I was waiting for that. How about it? I was waiting for that. This can get a little stir through. Okay, I know there's mushrooms coming. And you know there's mushrooms coming, but... When I mix the tomato paste and the garlic in, I feel like the mushrooms are a little delicate and I don't want to bust them up, so. When that's beautifully in, our mushrooms. A gentle toss. And because we don't want this to be a watery stew or pie, we'll go with three generous tablespoons of flour. Perfect. A quick mix, so everybody ends up in this white, dusty mess. We give this about a minute or two. And then we add our liquids, and that's a 12 ounce bottle of Guinness or any super dark stout-like beer. Beautiful. Cup and a half of chicken broth. Now I know you might be thinking, wait, Sam, chicken broth? How can that make sense? Well, it makes sense because with the Guinness, I find that the beef broth makes it just a little too, oh, I don't know, what's the word? Too, it's just too much. So everything gets stirred through. Couple more things, in comes our beef and the liquids that have accumulated in the pan. The bacon, remember the bacon? Don't forget the bacon. This all gets like a nice little, oh, damn, a mushroom drop. Five second rule, everybody understands that. Gorgeous, we're almost there, lads. Remember my favorite soy paste? Give it a couple tablespoons of soy paste. Another pinch of salt and pepper, everybody gets mixed. You want your liquid level almost coming right up to the top. We want some thyme in here. So a nice little bundle like that. And then if you like bay leaves, and I'm quite partial to them, you can throw them in. I never seem to get them when they're looking nice, like, well, that guy's okay, but you know, see like the Martha Stewart's of the world, they pull out those perfect bay leaves. I don't know where those come from. Okay, everybody's good? Maybe if you went to culinary school, you would. Yeah, shut up, I didn't go to culinary school, and everybody knows it. We put a lid on. This goes in the oven now for two hours at three and a quarter. Wow, look at this. Okay, so right now, let's take out the bay leaf. Ow! Okay, so right now, let's take out the bay leaf and the thyme. Looking good, but we're gonna give this, oh, 30 minutes just to thicken a tiny bit more. Just like that. When you see it next, it'll be cooled and ready to be turned into a pie. Hey, I promised you it would come out and be cooled down because to turn this into a pie, you don't want it boiling hot underneath because it'll steam up and it'll wreck the puff pastry. But I also said that you could have this either as a stew or a pie and just like this, maybe a little, oh, green parsley on top of it on mashed potatoes would be amazing. But we're gonna turn it into a pie because anything in a crust makes me happy. So this comes away and there's a sheet of puff pastry defrosted. They take about 45 minutes to defrost uh, or you could do it in the microwave, but be very careful because if you go too far, they get super gummy. 
So I'm just gonna roll this kit out a little bit more in all directions, just make it a little bit thinner. Okay, beautiful. Now, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm gonna certainly try. I just want to put little lines on here. I'm not cutting through. Don't cut through, Sam, don't cut through. But just do this, because when it cooks, it should make a pretty decoration. So let's just see, does this look like it's gonna go on that, boys? Pretty good? Yeah. Ah, what the hell? Let's try it, shall we? The thing about pies is that rustic is an important term to remember. Help me. Okay, we're good. So now you just can do this. There is no right or wrong to doing this. You just want all these pieces gathered up around the edge so it's nice and casual. Of an egg that I beat with a little bit of water, it will just give the top a little brushing to help give it some color when it bakes. I'm gonna tell you right now that when this is done, it's gonna be beautiful, but some of the gorgeous, thick, hugely rich and delicious gravy that got made when this thing was in the oven is gonna seep out around the edges. So it's not a failure. It's something that happens. I've never been able to keep it from happening, but I'm also not a baker, so I'm sure there's some trick that somebody knows. How could gravy seeping out be a bad thing anyway? It's not, but you know, if you want this just pretty golden brown without seepage, you know, you're watching the wrong guy. This is not Martha Stewart. We don't do things properly here. No, that's, by the way, I have mad respect for Martha Stewart. I really do. It's a long story. I won't get into it now, but she is. Didn't she go to jail? She did, and that's one of the things I like about her. Okay, so you need a couple holes in here to let some of the steam escape. Okay, the oven's at 400 degrees. This is gonna go in until it's gorgeous, probably uh, 30 minutes. And when all is said and done, it looks like that. As promised, a little bit of the sauce gravy started uh, seeping. Okay, so at some point, you hate to do it, but you gotta bust it. Even the, the gardeners are even getting close. And so if you just gently lift up this part, so we go like that, oh my God. And then look, oh, look, the onions, the carrots, the mushrooms, and the beef, oh my God. God, it's insane. And then, then you get some of this. The steam, the gorgeousness, the whole thing. Oh, the crust, just like that. And then you, you guess you gotta have a bite or something, right? Would be the right thing to do. Let's try a piece of this beef first. I love steam. Oh. Melt in your freaking mouth when oh, you gotta have an onion. Oh, mm. it's crazy delicious. Ever heard of braising? You're braising when you do this. You might not have known it, but when you take a piece of meat that's kind of tough and you cook it at a low temperature for an extended period of time in liquid, that's called braising. And you might have been doing it and you didn't know it. Look what you're learning here. You learn how to make a steak and mushroom pie or a steak and mushroom stew. Up to you. Like we said in the beginning, crazy delicious. We hope you make it. Boys, should they make it? Yes. Please make this. <laughs> Please make this. And go grab yourself a pizza party shirt. Yeah, oh yeah, by the way, uh, this merch, this is available. And this shirt is available at uh, Make America Cook. We used to say Make America Cook again, but there got too many fights broke out. Now it's just Make America Cook. We're serious about that. Cook America Cook. <laughs>